the builder may say it's block 14. So again, make sure you're in the right place. I was actually talking with a county inspector about this same issue and he said, oh yeah, more than once a year, I go into a site, get three quarters of the way through it and find out I'm in the wrong house. And this is from the county people. So double, triple check, you're in the right place. We're gonna jump right in because I initially just do an initial walk around, see what I'm in for. Can I get everywhere I need to get? If I see something that I, you know, I might not catch the next time through, I take a picture of it. So my pictures aren't necessarily in order. I have a plan for going through the house. But if I see something, I take a picture of it to remind me of it. This one is in the corner of the garage. It's one of the cleanouts. I took the picture because I'm willing to bet at the final, there's not going to be an access door there. And there needs to be. <clears throat> Electrical panels, we're supposed to identify where they are. You know, real simple picture. And here's one of my favorites in drywall. We're in the garage, we're looking up. Uh, everybody wants the bedroom or that nice big room over the garage. Well, how do the air HVAC ducts get there? They have to go over the garage, which means they have to work around things. And we're fitting two 10 inch ducts through one 12 inch opening. Um, somebody's not going to be breathing very well. And that is a problem. The builder typical response is they're still getting air through. All we're compressing is the insulation. Well, Number one, we're not getting the air we're supposed to get. Number two, you're not supposed to compress the insulation either. Uh, oftentimes I will include the brochure that comes in the box of the flexible insulation that says, don't crimp me. You know, here's how to splice it. Here's how you're supposed to sort it. You know, that sometimes helps, uh, but oftentimes the builder says, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, that's the way it was built. Another view, the same thing. Question, Hollis? Oh, okay. Uh, this is, a, again, a view. Excuse me just a minute. So let me just point out that we've got a remote audience, and then they can't hear any small talk here, so we need, really need to use the microphone. The sign-in token is, is big, B-I-G. Carry on, Bob. Okay. Again, this is looking at that duct. Uh, air is a liquid. <clears throat> Liquids do not like changing direction. So we're making a 90 degree turn, uh, especially this one. And you can see it's nicely crimped here. We're not going to get the flow we expect, which means that room above the garage is either going to be too hot, too cold, too sticky, too something. Uh, and that from what I'm hearing from my clients is their number one complaint about modern houses is HVAC is not comfortable. More views of the same thing. Ah, here's a fun one. This is the back of a tankless water heater. And this is what I see oftentimes. The red tape is mine. Um, I mark things with red tape, normally large pieces, uh, so they're easy to find again. Um, a lot of the builders, when you send them the inspection packet, <clears throat> they get this picture and they say, where is that? <clears throat> and you don't know. I can tell the builder, look for my red tape. And they can walk into a room and say, there it is, from across the room. So the red tape, but what, I'll ask the audience that I'm seeing here, can you tell me what is wrong with that? There's no fasteners, or not proper fasteners. Not proper fasteners, exactly. Um, that 65 pound dry tankless water heater is being held up with one nail and two drywall screws. Drywall screws have a really nasty habit of snapping. The screws for this unit come in the box. 
So they have no excuse. The fasteners come in the box. They are called out in the installation manual. Use these screws. And I'll let them use uh, deck screws if I can recognize them. But they're really supposed to be those nice, big, fat, washer head wood screws. That is a safety hazard because when those snap, we're going to lose the water line and the gas line. Here's a nice close up. And a long shot. I take lots and lots of pictures. Sometimes they're for me to remind me of something. Sometimes they're for positional pictures so I can describe to someone else or I may use multiple pictures to be able to zoom in on something so somebody else can say, oh, that's where it is, or that's why it's important. Again, long shot showing where it is. Does everybody know what the gray box in the upper left is? Fresh air. Fresh air. It is a powered fresh air intake. There is actually a separate filter and a separate fan in that box. Most of the time when I open that little box and take the filter out, it's got all sorts of crunchies on it because it's been running for several months. Nobody's noticed it. Uh, the duct that comes off of that typically goes right into the return. The input to it uh, is, goes outside and Everybody likes to bend it and twist it and things because it's, yeah, it's, it's not that important. That is what provi provides the fresh air in all modern houses. Again, uh, clean out, take pictures of all of them. Uh, that's not my red tape, it's builder spray paint. Typically when you see that, it means the builder rep has been through the house and he's recommending something be fixed. We can see it right here. Can everybody see that splice? That's how they fix bowed studs. They just cut it either all the way through or 90% bend it into place and then scab it with something. Most of the time that's okay doesn't work for structural walls. Stairs, always take, take, take pictures of stairs. Same thing, we've got ductwork that we're trying to bend and put through things. Kitchens, um, again, more views. We can see over in the corner our refrigerator box. Uh, the builder has called out where things go. Every once in a while you'll see things that aren't going to fit, aren't going to work. Uh, something's in the wrong place. Uh, now is the time to catch it. And again, we'll, we'll take multiple pictures. Does everybody know what this weird shaped thing here is? Don't hear anything. That is Philadelphia loop. No, it's a Chicago loop. Chicago loop. San Francisco loop. All right. Denver loop. It is a. It is the substitution for a vent. Uh, the discussion in the room, if you couldn't hear it was whether it's a Philadelphia loop, a Chicago loop, a Denver loop. Uh, it is very specific. Uh, it takes the place of a studer um, under a sink. These are a little bit better in that they don't have any moving parts and don't need to be replaced. Uh, but every sink needs some form of vent. And if you don't see it, it's a good thing to call out. So where does it vent to? It's actually self-venting in that either side can go up here and to this and from the other. One of these, I believe, will be covered 
and the sink will only go into one side. Uh, so the other side will be dry and go to your vent. So it's a self venting device. Goes back, oh, much longer than I can remember. The question is, where does it vent to? It's a self venting uh, configuration. Any other questions on that one? Again, kitchen layout, bathroom. And I can see an issue right here that I haven't flagged yet. And that is right there. We'll probably get to it in a little bit. Out exterior walls or common walls are where we normally see the most structural issues. Again, long views, just to cover yourself in case you forgot something. Stairs again. Laundry. The big X is a recommendation, uh, depending on what jurisdiction you're in, what development you're in, what state you're in. Um, there's supposed to be a tray under a washer, especially if you're over living space. It's more specific in uh, multiple uh, dwelling units where somebody else is living underneath you, you don't own the property underneath you. Uh, but I always recommend a, a tray underneath the washer. I'd like it to go out to daylight or go into a drain or the sump or something like that. Some jurisdictions get really picky about that. My recommendation is if you can't put it in at this stage, at least put the tray in and put one of those water wizards in it so that if the washer overflows, it either screams or it turns off the water. And again, it may save this floor, the hallway floor, the drywall underneath it, and the drywall, whatever the drywall might fall on down below. Good recommendation. I see uh, trays in about one third of the houses I inspect in Maryland. Uh, different jurisdictions make it very hard to put the tray in. Again, long shots. Radon. Radon pipes are supposed to be identified at every level. Um, there are multiple stories about people doing renovations. They open up a wall, they see a four inch pipe, and they say, oh, that's what I need to drain into. Guess what? It's the radon pipe, not the waste pipe. You don't know you have a problem for a year or two or three while all that waste goes into the gravel underneath your house. <clears throat> it gets very, very expensive to repair. So real simple thing. Make sure that the radon pipe is identified at every level. Real simple thing, but it has huge impact. There's my scuttle. And uh, well, again, we'll get to that more. Everybody know what that is? That is our pre-wire for our radon fan. Again, everybody wants to know where it is. Is it there? Again, in our territory, uh, every house is supposed to have at least a passive radon system installed. And uh, almost all builders in our region put in pre-wires. Again, take pictures of it uh, because sometimes when they do a radon test, you know, after they've done all the construction and the earth has stopped moving, they come back with a high number. Where is the pre-wire? Because you can't see it from the scuttle. Well, it's over the kitchen where the pipe went horizontally so it didn't show up on the front of the house and it jogs up, well, that's quite a ways away. It might require a different hole or somebody to get interesting. So again, take pictures because you may get a call in nine months to a year, where was that? And you've got the records. 
All right, sorry about the twist. Uh, I don't think I, you know, I can rotate that. Hmm. There we go. My favorite. What's the most dangerous thing on a construction site? I'm sorry? Nail gun. Nail gun. All right, what's number two? Sawzall. Hole saw. Hole saw. saw. Hole saw. <laughs> A plumber with a three and a quarter inch hole saw. Okay, he's going to use that whether it's he's running a half inch pipe or a drain waste pipe because it's what he's got. Um, how big is a two by four? Three and a half. So a three and a quarter inch hole in a two by four leaves me how much? Not enough. Not enough. Funny there. Yeah. The rule is 70%. I'm allowed to remove 70%. Um, we'll get, if you look at the one on the left, it's completely through. Now, drywall safety plates do not restore structural strength. These are supposed to be stud shoes, which wrap around the entire stud have probably about a dozen nails that have to be a specific strength, a specific length, uh, and those are required. This is an outside bearing wall. How do I know? That's fire drywall. So I'm on the outside wall where the trusses normally bear. So that that's a big no-no. Uh, all right, uh, next. Here's a close up. <clears throat> That's not acceptable. Bathrooms, take pictures of every bathroom. Uh, I'll take pictures of the bathrooms as I'm going through. Hey, Bob. Yes. Back to the previous slide, please. Well, I guess it's one before that. Where you said, you said that that's a bearing wall. Yes. Wall would be the front and the rear. That's the party wall between that and the next unit. Correct. It is also the bearing wall for the trusses for the floors. Because remember, in, in this is a townhouse. Um, so we've got party walls on both sides, and the floor trusses bear on those outside walls. But those aren't outside walls. That's the walls between the units. The outside walls are the front and the rear. They, yeah. the same, they go the same direction as the roof trusses typically. All right, thank you for your comment, Mark. Let's move on. Thanks, Alice. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> bathrooms, bathrooms. Uh, I'll take pictures of bathrooms as I'm going, uh, looking for specific things, such, you know, as we can see, lots of builder splices. But I'll also go back in when I think I'm done and just do bathrooms. A uh, position only picture of bathroom one, bathroom two, bathroom three, bathroom four. So again, redundancy, um, in case you forget something, you miss something, you've got a picture you can go back to. In this case, we can see my red tape over here, builder, repairs, lots of repairs. Different view, seeing that this is just a shower, dual sink. So we've got dual sink, toilet, and a shower. Next bathroom. Powder room. If there's something on the site, oftentimes, besides just the approval or denial stickers, you'll find either by the electrical panel or typically the dining room window. You will see lots of stuff. If the builder puts up floor plans and drawings and everything, take pictures. Uh, again, we don't need them or we shouldn't need them most of the time. But if we take pictures and your customer calls you in some period of time and says, do you have? Yes, I do. Which one do you need? Uh, 
And every once in a while, um, we've had issues at finals with grading, very common, issues with water. This has long since disappeared. So again, it's nice to have. Uh, protection. Um, some of the builders are a little bit slow on putting up the OSHA required protection. Um, so it's good to see that it's there. Red tape on a return. Why would I do that? Comment from the field? Cover. Cover. Okay. Um, I want the builder to cover the returns and the registers as soon as possible to prevent contamination. Um, we'll probably get to some pictures of furnaces with my name written in the dirt, but where does that come from? Right here. Um, if we cover those, we protect the ductwork. Now, the Energy Star guys are going to come through and cover them in about two and a half weeks. Meanwhile, we've gotten all the drywall dust, all the, the sawdust. Uh, we may get carpet fibers in a bit. I would like to see these covered up until we turn on the furnace for real. And we cover the registers. You know, we'll see blocks of plywood screwed over them. Nobody protects these. And these suck the dust in. So when they first turn on the furnace, all the stuff that was loose gets sucked in. And the builder's not going to put in a good filter. He's going to put in the cheapest thing he's got. So we just have a contaminated system. And we had three different ones. And a wall one. One behind the stair railing. If they're unprotected, they also get used as trash cans. Yes. And the comment was, if they're unprotected, they occasionally will be used as trash cans. I found soda cans, beer cans, lunch wrappers, you name it, in there. Uh, they make interesting noises. They make interesting smells. They get into the fans and do all sorts of damage. Again, that one was from the early. We are underneath the stairs. This is the sump pump. This is a, a sump pump in our area. Um, that one would be a little bit of a pain to replace. Again, most remember, everything has a lifetime. Um, so when this comes time to replace in 12 to 15 years, somebody's going to have fun. Um, so you write that up? Yep. What do you it may, expect the builder to do now? I'm just going to make a comment. Now, I'm not going to say move it or anything like that. There are occasional times where um, a wall will go partially over top of that, at which point those I do ask to be removed. You know, either move the wall or move the sump pump because it does need to be maintained. And as you've deployed it, it's not maintainable. Those, about 60% of the time, the builder will move it. Do you get the opportunity to come back and check to see if the work was there. The question was, do I get an opportunity to come back and review it? Sometimes. Um, I do about 90% of finals of houses I've done pre-drywalls on. Um, most of the time, I ask my client to make sure that they follow, you know, they get something from the builder that says what they've done because oftentimes it's going to be hidden. And they say, well, how can they prove it? I said, take a picture. You know, it used to be, you know, 20 years ago, we gave away these disposable cameras. So the, we'd hand the builder a disposable camera and say, you know, have this developed and sent, you know, just give me the camera back when you're done, I'll have it developed. Now, every builder or every contractor has a cell phone. Take a picture before and after, real simple. Again, we want to take pictures so we can see things. One thing I've started seeing a lot of 
uh, is this is our Watts 7S. It is a sprinkler backflow valve. Uh, all of us should know what it's there for. Uh, but what I'm seeing a lot of is they're unmarked. WSSC and most other water providers, along with the manufacturers, say these should be replaced every five years. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing tags. And, you know, how else are you going to remind people? Um, in, this, in this house, there are two of them. So we've got the one that we recognize. This is the Watt 7S. This is also one right here. Uh, it's smaller. Most people ignore it, but it serves the same purpose to prevent backflow. So both of them is very Yes. So we see the tag only on the. Yeah. Typically, we only see the tag on this one. Yeah. Um, I would replace both of them. And, and where there are tags, there are tags on both. Does everybody know what the Watts 7S does? I'm not seeing yays or nays. Okay. Prevents the stagnant water. Right. Uh, the sprinkler pipe that it will eventually be connected to right here. Uh, hopefully, it is a wet sprinkler. There are dry sprinklers in commercial worlds. 90% of residential installation of sprinklers are wet. So there's going to be water in that pipe. Why are there two of them? I'm sorry? Why are there two of them? Uh, we can get backflow from two different directions. The Watt 7S is responsible for protecting the stagnant water that's in the sprinkler system from backing up into our drinking water. The simplest explanation is that if you flush a toilet, turn on a dishwasher, and take a shower at the same time, for a moment, the water pressure in the house is lower than the water pressure in the sprinkler system. I didn't have that check valve. Some of that crunchy water that's been there for five years is going to be sucked into my drinking water. So that is the primary one. We have the same one here to protect against inadvertent backflow in tubs, sinks, and other things that do not have backflow valves on them. Our hose bibs. It's also, it's also the fire department. They turn on, they open up those hydrants. You're going to potentially have that vacuum. Yep. Also, not just in the house. The comment uh, was that if the fire department decides to rinse the pipes uh, or anything like that, your water pressure outside the house may plummet. And we don't want to have our water going back out into the neighborhood. Um, there have been some interesting stories in our area of what can happen when those aren't there. But again, real simple thing, just to be, care be careful of it, document it, take pictures of it. More duct work. Electrical panel. Typically, this is all we see. At this point, I generally don't open the panel. There's nothing there to see, but I take a picture of it, showing what it is, where it is, all that fun stuff. Definitely take a picture of where the electric meter is. You want to identify what, what it is being fed from. Is it being fed from overhead? Is it being fed from underground? Or is it a multi-bank? Uh, oftentimes, when we go in row houses, There'll be a, a quad meter or sometimes larger. Um, and what we're seeing right here is something that's new um, because we had a large problem with settlement pulling electrical uh, service entrance cables out of the meter box. Can you zoom in on uh, I think I can. All right. Okay. Oh, no, that's true. So this pipe that goes into the meter box used to go all the way down to here, where it joins the service lateral pipe. 
when the dirt around the townhouse settled or the single family, it would pull the pipe and the wire right out of the meter can, resulting in some five minutes. Oh, okay, it's seven o'clock now. Um, I'll just finish this slide up and we'll go. Um, and that would pull this out. This is now a separate piece of pipe with a sleeve that can move. So if it pulls, you know, as long as there's some slack, it won't destroy the meter can and, and cause fires and explosions. Is that required now? If it's not there now, like it up? Jurisdiction? Uh, jurisdiction by jurisdiction. Uh, I think PEPCO requires it. I'm not sure about Allegheny or any of the other providers. Hollis, uh, is that a good place for you? All right. Uh, I'm going to stop here. Uh, I have more slides if anybody wants to see them, and I'm more than happy to continue on, you know, as we go. Similar things uh, on drywall. Uh, again, I'm looking at the electrical here. Um, and again, one of the things I walked around, you walk around, you look at things also for your own safety. And that one was sort of jumped out at me. That is the stairs. That is what the stairs are supporting, are supporting on, on the landing. This is one of those split levels where you go up, there's a landing, and you can go either back down on the other side or continue up on the next level. <clears throat> Notice what the bearing surface is. Wow. That's all that's supporting those stairs. Um, doesn't matter. That's yellow pine. That's strong stuff. Yeah. I see a gap right there. And it's like, um, yeah. Um, if, yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, that's like, no, 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 no. I uh, don't know. Uh, garage pictures. Oh, gee, there's a crack in that slab. Here we go. There's a crack man. Yep. Grounds, make sure you get a picture of the ground, where it's going, what is it? Is it an oofer? Is it a driven rod? Uh, is it both? Um, is the connection to the ground permanent? Uh, some jurisdictions allow uh, split nuts. More and more jurisdictions are going to those permanent crimp connectors um, because they can't be loosened by mistake. They don't wear loose, anything like that. But again, you just want to make sure it's there. Uh, garage. Uh, what I was trying to get a picture of is whether it was torsion or side springs. So I can just barely see the torsion spring up here. Again, side picture tells me the same thing. Again, no ex extension spring. I really do not like extension springs. Has anybody seen this recently? Most of the time when I see um, the gas pipes, the black CSST, um, this is what I'm starting to see from the meter into the house up out of danger re region. Uh, it's rather aggressive, <clears throat> looks like uh, the old uh, armor clad, but it's an inch and a quarter or so. Uh, pretty aggressive stuff. It's not jacketed. That is the jacket. So there, there is a black CST. There's black CSST inside that. I'm not sure that you can conceal a gas line with a conduit. Um, that only goes up to the ceiling. It went from there up to the ceiling and stopped. So it was there phys just for physical protection. I've seen it in a couple of different houses. All of them were up in Frederick County. I've never seen that. Has anybody else seen that? Yeah. And, and Nick, your question on whether it's legit? 
Yeah, well, not uh, we're, we're hearing from the audience, Lenar Homes, um, where in Virginia or Maryland? Maryland. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, you'll see different materials from different builders. Gas line, um, took a picture there because I'm going to say, I'm make sure you put a bollard in. I don't know why they put some of this stuff right at the front door, but that's where they put it. Our sump pump again, that one's a little bit easier to get to. Hose bib inside the garage, still frost free or frost resistant. Better picture of the garage. Ever so slightly different uh, mechanical room. Our water heater. PEX. More and more of the builders going to single color PEX. I very rarely see red and blue anymore. Uh, I think there's one builder that still uses red and blue, but I haven't, I think it's Winchester that I haven't seen very many of those. I don't like Winchester houses in general. There's our black CSST. Black CSST does not require the um, page to be signed off on by the client that the yellow SS CSST is. <clears throat> For those of you who haven't seen it before, yellow CSST requires a special form to be given to the client saying what it is, what the risk is, and what the recommended repair is. Black CSST does not. Questions from the field? What about the grounding on that? Bonding. 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 Re required by whom? State of Maryland. You have to give them a document that they have to yes. sign that they've... They don't have to sign it. We have to sign it. I thought it was just a statement had to put in our report. It's a statement we have to put on the report. Yep. Yeah. That's For Maryland, too. Closure form. But it's it has to be included as part of the report. All right, so you're using the term form. It has to be included in the report. Yeah, and it's very specific. It has to be signed? No. I, no. Mine's automatically signed. But. All right, okay. <clears throat> uh, this is another one of those fresh air intake ducts. Um, that they're trying to squeeze an eight inch duct through, it looks like about a four and a half inch hole. Uh, we're not going to get as much fresh air as we think we are. Most of you probably didn't see that. There's two pictures back to back of the same thing. Uh, oftentimes, again, I take a lot of pictures. So when I'm back in the office and I'm going through the pictures and I'm looking for things to put in the report, how do I? quickly know without zooming in on every picture what what is something particular if i see two pictures that are identical or three back to back that's a defect picture so there's that picture there's that picture so if i see two pictures back to back on my photo roll it tells me oh i need to write that up it's a reminder from four and a half hours ago that I need to do something specific on this photo. Right. We're getting some questions in the remote audience about the yellow, yellow CSST. Sean, can you just lay it out? Tell us exactly what the deal is. Well, gosh, I hope so. <laughs> um, it's my understanding. We can look it up. In Maryland, if you see yellow CSST, you have to put a specific Disclaimer, disclosure, whatever you want to call it in your report that basically says the it's a yellow CSST and it needs to be the bonding needs to be verified by a qualified electrician. License master electrician, whatever the language is, is this the state says. I don't have it memorized. Yellow, yellow CSST. Black CSST, CSST needs to be bonded, just like yellow CSST. Um, but it usually happens at the appliances. Um, it's not as important as the yellow CSST is. Did that clarify? Yellow CSST? 
I believe so. I, it's my understanding you can, as long as it's installed properly, um, I don't think that it's been banned. The, the manufacturers don't want that product to be banned. And that's why they came to the commissions, the various down in Virginia and Maryland, they came to the home inspection commissions and pushed the liability onto home inspectors to say, our product's bad. Yeah, we know. We're not going to recall it. You guys have to tell everybody about it, though. Cool. All right. <laughs> The CSST disclosure? It's, it, it is on the, the state website, the DLLR website. If I remember, send me an email and remind me, and I'll do that. I'll do that. I can find it easy. Is that good? All right. Danny said he always includes a statement as to why it needs to be done. Yeah. Due to damage caused by a local lightning strike. Yeah. That answer the question? Okay. Um, tears in the outside jacket of insulated uh, ducting. Everybody sort of says, oh, yeah, that's, you know, that, that doesn't worry anything. It will void the insulation completely because if we're pumping 55 degree air through the inner duct, and it's typical Washington summer where it's 98 degrees and 100% humidity. The, the, you will get condensation inside the insulation. And the insulation will slowly creep out, fill with water. And water is a wonderful conductor. So your insulation value goes to nothing. Uh, that cannot be repaired with duct, duct, with a uh, duct with a k tape it must be repaired with duct with a t tape duct tape with a t is labeled with uh, a ul number and some other ANSI number that says it's meant to be used for this most of the ducts uh, insulated ducts want you to use their tape so if you just see blank metal foil tape on something like that it's wrong Again, two pictures back to back. Uh, oftentimes, uh, most of our reports require you to take a picture or identify what the uh, entrance pipe is. Is it plastic, copper, galvanized, lead? And we, you know, I haven't seen any lead, but I know it's still available in downtown Washington. Um, so we want we want that picture. I have a comment about. Oh, okay. Furn uh, furnace, um, this is how I found it. I did not take the cover off yet. You know, why would you leave it open? You know, wouldn't you want to put the cover back on at the end of the day? But whatever. Uh, again, people like to leave things open. That's a good place to put a soda bottle. Beer can. Ashtray. Ashtray, yep. There's the builder's version of the right size filter. Um, that may start, stop large sawdust particles. Uh, it's not going to stop drywall. It's not going to start stop carpet fibers, paint, dust, any of that stuff. Um, it needs to be a good proper filter. It's an extra fifty bucks. Uh, I'm all if I've if the draft stopped person has already been through, uh, and I see one or two holes. I'll mark them, take pictures of them, include it in my report saying draft stop is incomplete. Much more than about three holes, I'm just going to say draft stop incomplete, you know, redo the whole thing, or at least examine the whole thing. Uh, the way I count is one, two, what's the next word? Many. Many. Because if there's more than two, I know I'm going to miss one. You know, so again, it's one, two, many of almost anything. If I test electrical outlets, and this is a different type inspection, but if I test an outlet, ah, reverse polarity, second outlet, reverse polarity, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not to say, I'm going to push it back on the electrician and say, find all the reverse polarities and fix them. Because if I say there are six and there's seven, guess who's buying the seventh one? Not me. No less than 
Yeah. 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 That's a good. No less than. No less than. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is what I call an oops hole. You know, the plumber drilled a hole, or the plumber's apprentice drilled a hole. Uh, wasn't where it was supposed to be. So he just drilled another one. He doesn't care. Uh, again, just looking. That's a different view, looking at the house wrap, looking at the different vents. There's, uh, I heard on the last call that these uh, penetration are supposed to, uh, penetration seals are supposed to be uh, properly taped as well. Um, so I learned on that one. Comment? The one to be there, the inside. Yeah, I'm happy to see these seals, whether they're taped or not. Yeah. All right, let me. Um, Nope. Yep. <laughs> let, Bob, let me read this because uh, this just came through the chat from the remote people. Those are the people who have access to Google during <laughs> during the meeting. So I'm gonna, I'm just going to read this to you, FYI, uh, regarding yellow CSST, Maryland Flynn and Laird Act of 2022. The Flynn and Laird Act of 2022, House Bill number 1052, will take effect on October 1, 2022, which is in the past. Uh, the act expressly prohibits the use of non-arc resistant. Somebody just unmuted their mic. Jim Wilson, I think that's you. Can you mute? Um, the act, who's got this, whoever's got their mic on, please mute yourself. The, um, the act expressly, expressly prohibits the use of non-arc resistant jacketed CSST in one, the new construction of a customer owned natural gas or liquefied propane piping system in a building, two, a natural gas or liquefied propane piping system in a renovated property if the renovation affects more than 50% of the total square footage of the property, or three, a natural gas or liquefied propane piping system that requires the addition of a new gas line to the gas piping system. If I stand or, corrected. Or repairs. Yeah. There was also a class action lawsuit against Gas Tight and some other manufacturers in 2017. So, the, the, you know, it's our job to tell our clients about this stuff. Um, we're the only ones who are looking for it and in a position to protect our clients. So make sure you don't miss it. <laughs> 